space morning glories. There's another gal in the garden. The voluminous, the all-encompassing, Thunbergia alata. I annually underestimate the height and space that this plant takes up. It can grow as high as eight feet. And like, that's an average, so you give it the perfect conditions and who knows how high it'll go. You'll either want to have it in a really large container, kind of like this, or in a hanging basket, big enough and high, high up so it can trail eight feet or so down. Or my favorite option, help it climb. Your choice, trellis, stakes, whatever. You give it something to work with, your senses will thank you midsummer. Some people call them Bergia alata, black eyed Susan vine, and that's also a common name for Rudbeckia, so just be aware of that common name crossover. The Latin species name, alata, means winged. Do I have to explain? Look at it. It's angelic. Thumbergia comes from Africa. So many beautiful plants come from Africa. I have sown Thumbergia indoors eight weeks prior to my last frost. You can direct sow, but if you have a shorter growing season, I recommend starting indoors. If you're planting seeds in a large container, to get that really full look, often you can plant multiple seeds. Like this container here, I'd put four. The seeds are these small brown round things with a little hole at the base. They almost look like morel mushroomy if you look really close. Or sort of honeycombed, the pattern is really quite special. They're big enough that you can even soak them 24 hours before you plant, just to speed up that germination a bit. They're roughly the size of peppercorns. Put them in a full sun location for best results. I did grow one one year and put it in a north facing porch and it was okay. It climbed and it looked beautiful. So don't feel like you can't give that a go if you have no south facing exposure. All I'm gonna say about soil is they like it fertile and moist. Add some compost in, it'll love it. Keep Thumbergia watered, okay? It's not super drought tolerant. If you forget to water, it'll show. The blooms drop easily anyways, so if you don't water, you're gonna be losing blooms pretty fast and that plant's gonna be looking pretty parched. This color would look amazing with purple and blue. Something like a purple petunia, a campanula maybe, that bellflower. Ooh, delphiniums with their height. Those would be some great Thumbergia companions. If you live in a lower growing zone, I have great news for you. Thumbergia can be grown indoors as a houseplant. It does need sufficient light though. You may need extra lighting equipment if you don't have like a bright self-facing window in the winter time. You plant it in a container, just prune it a bit, clean it up, take it inside, enjoy it all winter long. I love this foliage, maybe even more than I like the flowers. The leaves grow opposite along the stems and they're arrow-like, a bit coarse in texture. The edges of the leaves are often serrated for Thumbergia. Depends on the variety. The actual stems are delicate, graceful. They aren't tendrils like peas. They're climbing vines, and they will not quit. As you can see here, this was purchased in a hanging basket, and it had already grown all the way over the, the hanger, so I took it out of the basket and just clipped the hanger to a trellis. Voila. Now it has some depth in the pot, and some height and support. Each one and a half inch flower has five overlapping petals. They can be white, yellow, red, pink. Most commonly you'll see this dark orange and yellow flower color. They have this tubular dark center. You can just stick your pinky right in there. I was just talking to a friend the other day about sticking your finger in flower holes. It was actually a baby bromeliad and I gotta tell you, I think it adds like half an hour to your life every time you do it. Super pleasant experience. <laughs> this is a picture of a flower blooming, but when the flower is spent, you'll see whether it was pollinated or not because there'll be a little green fruit left in there. I feel I should warn you, once this dries, these seeds will violently self-eject, you know, for the sake of continued existence. So if you really want to save your seeds, I'd suggest wrapping something like a paper towel around the fruit pod when it's starting to look dry and then it'll catch those peppercorn-like seeds that come shooting out for you to save. If I had to pick a plant to like encompass me, definitely be Thumbergia. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more videos like this. They come out every Friday.